Hi, my name is Harsh and in this video we are going to talk about how you can use AWS SDKs with LocalStack. LocalStack is a cloud service emulator that allows you to run various AWS services right on your local machine. But now the question is that how can you connect to these emulated services? You might have guessed it right using AWS SDKs. AWS SDKs are tools and libraries that allows you to interact with and manage your AWS cloud resources alongside your application code. AWS provides a bunch of language SDKs in various programming languages such as Golang, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, C++, and more. You can use two methods to connect your SDK code with a running local stack container. The first method relies on manual configuration where you have to specify an AWS endpoint URL that allows your SDK code to interact with the local stack container. In the second method, we use transparent endpoint injection, which uses a proxy server to allow unmodified AWS SDK code to directly interact with the local stack container. We will explore how both of these methods work in action, and we will also look into a special case scenario with the S3 service. So without much ado, let's jump right into the demo. Let us first take a look at the demo application to demonstrate how to use AWS SDKs with LocalStack. Over here, I'm using the language that I'm most familiar with, which is Python. I have created a lambda underscore function dot pi file, which interacts with the DynamoDB service using the Boto3 library. Boto3 is the official AWS SDK for Python. And as a matter of fact, it was named after the freshwater dolphin, which is native to the Amazon River. Now, when this Lambda function is triggered, it generates a unique event ID and records the current timestamp and saves these along with the event details in an event records DynamoDB table using this put item function provided by the Boto3 library. The Lambda then returns a success status code and the event ID. Sweet and simple for our purpose. All of the infrastructure is provisioned using the AWS CLI and the corresponding AWS local wrapper script, which redirects all of the AWS API request to the running local stack container. I have also created these makefile targets to simplify the process of setting up local stack container, deploying the DynamoDB table and the Lambda function locally, and also packaging and invoking my Lambda function. So let us now go ahead and start the local stack container using this command. I'm starting the local stack community image to demonstrate how you can connect your AWS SDK with the community edition of local stack. Next, let us go ahead and create our DynamoDB table. I'm using the create table makefile target to create the DynamoDB table running on my local machine. You can already navigate to the local stack logs and get to see that the API calls are being made to the local stack container, which verifies that the operations are being successfully executed. Now you can package the Lambda function with its dependencies into a zip file archive before creating the Lambda function. Remember, you can either use a zip file archive or a container image to deploy your Lambda functions either on AWS or on local stack. Let us finally go ahead and create our Lambda function. I'm using the Python 3.9 runtime over here, but do remember that for your purpose, you can use any other language or runtime as you particularly prefer. Now that the Lambda function has been created, we can go ahead and invoke the local Lambda. I'm going to use the make invoke target right over here. And this basically invokes the record event Lambda function along with some sample JSON data. You can already notice that there has been an error during the Lambda execution. So you can go to the output.txt and you can get to see that there has been an unrecognized client exception right over here. To better analyze this error, you can head to the local stack web application. And let us go ahead and first refresh this. 
I can navigate to the Lambda resource browser and I can click on the record event Lambda that I have just created locally. And to verify the error, I can go ahead and click on the logs that will show me all of the CloudWatch log events over here. Now, as you might have noticed in the output.txt file, we received an unrecognized client exception. And this was when we actually called the DynamoDB put item operation. And the error is that the security token included in this request is invalid. So why is this happening? This is happening because the Boto3 client that we have specified right over here, it is actually targeting the real AWS cloud. And since the AWS access key ID and the secret access key is set to mock credential, it basically fails to connect. But hey, we also need to make sure that it does not connect with the real AWS cloud. The whole purpose of using local stack is because we want to make sure that we can develop and test locally without ever having to connect to the real AWS. So we need to connect to the emulated DynamoDB resource that is running within local stack. So to solve this problem, we are going to take a first look into the manual configuration step that would allow the AWS SDKs, O2.3 in this particular example, to interact with our local stack resources. Now, in order to make sure that the Boto3 client can interact with the local stack container, you would need to configure an endpoint underscore URL parameter. The local stack container exposes the same set of HTTP APIs as the real AWS cloud. Almost every client, including the AWS SDKs, communicate via that HTTP API. In this case, the endpoint underscore URL parameter should be specified to localhost.localstack.cloud colon 4566. The reason why we are using this is because this domain name resolves to the local stack container via our DNS server. This is especially useful while using local stack compute environments like ECS or EC2 and Lambda in this particular example. However, do note that if you are behind a corporate firewall or an internet service provider, that does not allow resolving localhost.localstack.cloud, you can fall back to localhost colon 4566, which is the edge port that forwards all API calls to the local stack container. So let us go ahead and add the endpoint URL parameter to our boto3.client function call. Now this will ensure that the boto3 client connects with the local DynamoDB table and not the real AWS cloud. Our local stack community image is already up and running. So I'll go to the other terminal and I'll run this handy make file all target that will get started with creating my DynamoDB table, packaging my Lambda function, creating the Lambda function, and finally invoking it. This process will take a few seconds, but once this is complete, we will be able to verify that our Lambda function was able to connect with the locally emulated DynamoDB table. You can see that the status code is 200. And if you navigate to output.txt file, you will get to see that the event was recorded with this particular ID. Now to better check out the item that was inserted into the DynamoDB table, I can go back to my local stack resource browser. I can check out the DynamoDB resource browser over here. Click on the event records DynamoDB table and you can get to see that our item is present right over here. So we have the event ID, we have the timestamp, and we have the details available right over here. So during this whole step, you were able to see that we would need to manually configure the SDK code to connect with the local stack container. Now, what if we want local stack to exactly take care of this? basically allow you to use your unmodified AWS SDK code with your local stack resources and not go out in your entire application code and manually configure this endpoint URL parameter here and there. So we have a solution for that. So previously local stack used to provide patched AWS SDKs to redirect all of the AWS API calls in a transparent manner to the running local stack container. Now, the patched SDKs have been deprecated and you can use something called as the transparent endpoint injection, which basically uses a DNS based domain resolution to resolve the AWS domains 
and connect your unmodified SDK code with the local stack container. Let us take a look into how that exactly works. Transparent endpoint injection allows you to connect with the local stack container without modifying your SDK code at all. How it works behind the scene is by resolving AWS domains such as Amazon AWS.com, including subdomains to the local stack container. Let us take a look into how it works. I'm going to start my local stack pro container since transparent endpoint injection works only with the pro image. You can sign up for free on the local stack web application to grab an auth token and start local stack with the pro features. Next, I'm going to remove the endpoint underscore URL parameter from my boto3.client function call so that I can showcase that I can run my unmodified SDK code against the local stack. Next up, I'm going to use the make all target to deploy all of my resources once again on the local stack container. This will create the DynamoDB table, package the Lambda function, create the Lambda function, and finally invoke it, where we will get to see that the Boto3 client was able to connect with the locally emulated DynamoDB table with no additional configuration required. You can actually go to the output.txt now and you can get to see the status code is 200 and the event was recorded with this particular ID. Now, if you'd like to disable the transparent endpoint injection, you can use this particular configuration variable while starting your local stack container. This option disables DNS resolution of AWS domains to the local stack container. However, do note that transparent endpoint injection, if not used, will make the AWS SDK within the Lambda functions to try to connect to the real AWS APIs, like the example that we saw before. And it is generally not recommended to connect to real AWS with the local stack. Another note that I would like to share is that the transparent endpoint injection automatically disables the SSL certificate validation of the AWS SDK for Lambda runtimes, such as Python, Node.js, and Java. This might have security implications, hence make sure that this setting should only be used for local development and testing. Lastly, I would like to explore a special case scenario with the S3 service. So if you're using the S3 service with a local stack, you should be mindful of path style or virtual hosted style based on the host header of the request. In the context of local stack, setting the host header correctly is important because local stack handles the request in a similar fashion as the real AWS cloud. Now, it is recommended that while interacting with the S3 service while using AWS SDKs, you configure S3 dot localhost dot local stack dot cloud so that local stack can parse the bucket name from your request. If your endpoint cannot be prefixed with S3 over here, you should configure your SDK to use path style request instead and make the bucket part of the path and configure the force path style parameter to true. This depends on SDK to SDK, and I would suggest to refer to the AWS and local stack documentation to better understand this. In this particular example, I have this Python script that creates an S3 bucket, uploads the file output.txt that we have specified over here, lists the files that are present in the S3 bucket, and finally read the file and print the content that is present in the S3 bucket. Now you can start the local stack community image using the make file target over here. And once this is up, I can run this script and you will be able to notice that the script executes successfully. The bucket is created, the file is uploaded and it is queried and all of the file content is printed on the console. Now, most SDKs will try to use the virtual hosted style request and prepend your endpoint with the bucket name. However, if the endpoint is not prefixed by S3, local stack will not be able to understand the request and it will most likely result in an error. If you're having issues resolving this DNS record, you can always fall back to localhost colon 4566 in combination with setting the force path style parameter to true. I have seen many folks falling in this pitfall and I hope this was helpful for you to understand around how you should avoid this particular caveat. So that was a long and short about how you can use 
AWS SDKs with local stack. If you are using the local stack community image, you can use the manual configuration to connect to the local stack container. If you're using the pro image, on the other hand, you can directly use the transparent endpoint injection to directly connect with the running local stack container. Now, if you would like to explore the language SDK documentation further, please go and check out the link down in the description below. On the other hand, if you're interested to know more about infrastructure as code frameworks like CloudFormation or Terraform or CDK or SAM, I have a different video on that particular topic and I will link that down in the description below. I hope to see you in the next video where we are going to talk further about local stack integrations and how you can use your favorite developer tools to directly connect with local stack and use that for a seamless development and testing experience. Till that time, I wish you a good day and I hope to see you in the next one.